guys, welcome to the unboxing and full review of this Pro Aim X Smart AI Recognition Bird Feeder. So when we compare it to other Smart Bird Feeders, then it's a little bit smaller. This can be very convenient to mount it and also to store the box. So here we get already some description, some of the features, QR codes, and here the specs on this side. Regarding features from what I've seen, it has everything what we can expect these days. So it comes with two-way audio, has included a microphone and speaker. It has an AI bird detection and it comes nicely protected. It comes even with a large 64 gigabytes micro SD card. I would say that's something really positive, top-notch equipment here. Also this mount here for some poles. Then we have the full instructions manual, how to mount, how to install and use the app. But I'm going to show most of it anyway. And then here we have the bird feeder itself with the tray for the birds. So mounting and installation material, USB cables mount for the solar panel and a pretty beautiful solar panel i would say really nice one looks solid has everything what we need i mean it's connected here to the solar panel which is normal what we have here as a special thing and that's the usb-c connection i think that's the first bird feeder what i see with usb-c this is what we want to see in 2023 and we get even this bracket mount for a pole or on a tree and this additional mount. And so we have the main device here. I would say everything looks really good. It's not really smaller than other ones. I think they have just found a better way to store everything in a smaller box. And so we can remove this cushion here, of course. So we have this USB plug here inside. That's a 90 degrees plug which is needed because we have limited space here. That's normal. And so we can pull the access port here a little bit to the front. You can also push underneath here. And so we have access to the port and we can remove this protection here. And so we can take out the micro SD card. Should be easy to open. And now we push it into the micro SD card slot. The pins have to look to the back. Push it straight down with your fingernail till you hear some clicking and then we can put back the cover and plug in the USB cable. Push it fully down so it's secure here and has full contact. Something like that. So you can see we can still move the camera in case you have to do something and you are not damaging the cable. And so we do not only have protection here. We have also nice water protection from the top. I mean, we have a roof on top anyway. But the good thing, it's recessed a lot. So it's very difficult for some animals to access this cable here because that's the most sensitive part. I love this construction. And even when you want to point the camera a little bit down for a better view in this area it's still far in the back almost impossible for animals to cut the wire and so we grab this part of the cable and so we have a super interesting construction here on the roof i've never seen that before but it totally makes sense to have this connection here which is really good protected to have two separate wires a short one to the camera and then a longer one to the solar panel so i'm plugging this one in here and the other one we can use for the solar panel and we have this opening here for the cable in the back make sure that you're feeding this cable properly here that you're not squeezing it and now we have to align the roof here and here and then close it in the back so we can already push it down here make sure that it's fully down on both of the sides also here you really have to push a little bit hard but you can see now we have this flipping mechanism so we can easily open and close the roof also to feed the food here inside of course every time we have to be a little bit careful with the cable so make sure you feed this cable here through this opening so it's not going to be squeezed and only then fully close it 
The bracket to mount the bird feeder is really good, solid. I have seen this with many other bird feeders. This is pretty much standard. So how this works is you mount this on a tree or wall or pole or whatsoever. And when this is stable, you put the bird feeder on top. And so it's very secure. You can point it to different directions. You don't have to really screw this together. That's a good flexible solution. And instead of the screws, you can also use this strap here around the pole. And of course, for the solar panel, we need this base mount. And on top, this one here, and the screw goes into the solar panel directly. Pretty much standard. What I like here is that we have a lot of plastic because this lasts usually longer than metal outside. And of course, as a very last thing, we have to attach this tray here. We simply push it down. If you want to have it fully secured, you can use the screws, which are in this bag from underneath. It's a rather simple design, but I love it. I have seen some very sophisticated designs with some beautiful trays here. And this usually is going to be a mess, especially when you have squirrels and other animals. Usually they make a huge mess and it starts smelling. When you have it as clean as that, then it's much better can be cleaned just from the water, from the rain. We also have some nice drainage holes here in this area. And so we can scan the QR code in the manual to download the app. The app is available in the official Play stores. It's the Bird Lover app, which I have already. I've been using that for another bird feeder. It has been working really good. So when we want to connect a new one, we click on the plus. And here in this case, we have to add the BF21. I've been a little bit fast here if we need a reset, but usually it's reset when it comes from the factory anyway. But of course, we have to turn it on. So I was definitely too fast. Remove the protection again. Let's remove also the cover here because we need the camera. The reset pinhole, if needed, is back here. The on-off is this switch slider from left to right. Okay, so I think it's ready to be connected. Click on Next. Click on Next. We have to confirm. Click on Next. Then we choose the Wi-Fi here, which we want to use to connect this bird feeder and apply the right password. It should be a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, but you can also use a combined 2.4 5G network. And it's highly recommended to be connected to the same 2.4G network already with your phone. After the connection is established, you can use any connection on your phone. You can also be remote. You can use 3G, 4G, 5G, whatsoever. So we click on Next. So I push here inside with a toothpick to reset it. And now we hold the QR code in front of the camera. Okay, it looks like it has been successful reading the QR code. We click on I heard the prompt. And so it has found this bird feeder. We click on done. Of course, it's recommended to update the firmware. And so we have already the live view, you can see. And now we have all the functions which I'm going to show you later. So I'm going to mount the bird feeder outside and then let's go from there. I have already attached the two mounts to the tree here, just four simple screws here, two screws. And so I'm putting the bird feeder on top. You can see it's already pretty safe. You can turn it around. Of course, if you like, you can secure the whole thing from underneath with this cover and some screws. And so we put this grate here on top. After that, we secure it from underneath. And so here for the solar panel, we have to put this over this mount or this extender and secure it here. I would recommend to make it straight. And then we align the standard tripod mount here and secure it here with a couple of rotations. Align it to the sun and fully secure it. Yeah, so I would say a really nice clean installation, best installation I've ever had for a bird feeder. Definitely most stylish one. I'm pretty happy with the installation. And so I have the bird feeder now outside since a couple of days and it works really good. So we have in the overview already a couple of functions like the playback album, share message. The playback outside here needs a subscription, but we have also playback locally from the micro SD card. By the way, I wanted to actually record from the BlueStacks Android emulation on Windows 11, but unfortunately, this device is not fully 
compatible at least not at the moment with the blue stacks maybe with another emulation but i can't use it currently on windows but i guess it's just a matter of time so when we want to get a live view we click here it's already a little bit late so the image is not the best during the day of course it's much better but still now you can see actually for this time it's at about sunset and the quality is really good we can see that also later in the recorded footage i'm really impressed here by the quality what's awesome here is that it's focusing pretty close so that's perfect of course for birds and squirrels or whatever shows up here and you can also see that it has a really stable connection it's transmitting with more than 100 kilobytes pretty steadily one of the best live views I've ever seen. So when we want to talk to somebody, we can hold this button here. We can start making an image or start recording a video directly from here. If we see something, of course, because it's so late, no animals are showing up anymore. But of course, for that, we have the history. So the most important thing is that you open the menu here and then we have so many functions. We can activate or deactivate the sound. Then here again we have the video, photo and the full size. And we can also use the bird detection if there is a bird. Of course there's no bird here at the moment. But it does actually a pretty good job. If you see a bird here and you hit this button, usually it's detecting the bird pretty accurate. I have done this already. Yes, yeah, stop the audio here. We don't need that at the moment. It's a little bit windy. The things which we have manually recorded is in the gallery, like all the pictures, all the videos. There's also something called collection, but I haven't found anything here. We can use share. Here we can also use the talking function if somebody's here. And then we have a siren. We have two types of siren. We have the manual siren. If you see an animal which you don't want to feed, you can hit the siren or you can activate the automatic squirrel siren. If it detects a squirrel, it will use that. It's a nice function, but squirrels are getting used to that. Then we have two types of recognition. That's very important. We can activate the bird spotting and I had it on for some time, but it didn't catch any birds. Even though there were many birds here during this time, I don't know what was wrong. Maybe they are still working on this function or we had some birds which were not detectable. So usually I'm using the motion detection which works really good and not only for birds but also for all other kind of animals like squirrels. Or you can use it even as a surveillance camera, for example, when you're at home, you can use it as a bird feeder camera. And when you're away, you can point it towards your entrance door and leave it activated like that. And then you have also a good surveillance camera that works as well. So, of course, now we want to see some footage. And so we go to messages and so we can see what has happened today. It's very easy to use. But it seems we had a lot of false alerts because of a lot of wind. But of course we had also some animals here, a lot of squirrels. You can see that usually it's doing a really good job on motion detection, especially when we have it optimized. I can show you how we are doing that. So we can click on an image and then see the details. Unfortunately, we cannot swipe to the next picture. We have to go back to the overview and hit the next image but we can also use the live view or like the video view you can see really nice here so it's playing from the micro sd card which we have inserted what's cool here is that we can shot a photo from here or we can download the footage or even better and that's my favorite function here that's awesome that's not available in all the bird feeders you can start recording here and then it skips to the next scene and it keeps recording. So you can, for example, record everything which has been going on through the day. You can record it in one single video. So you don't have to download 50 clips or so. So you have at the end 
everything you can see. We have then maybe the birds, we have the squirrels, we have maybe other stuff. If you have it activated as a surveillance camera, you will see even that. So that's something which I really love. You can see the whole timeline and the blue lines always mean that there was some motion. Here, of course, a lot of false alerts because of the motion of these plants and other stuff. But we can actually optimize that. I had it already done. But of course, now it's not working perfectly anymore with so much wind. So I have to optimize that. I can show you where we have to do that. Here we have the settings. We have really a lot of settings. What's important to know is the basic function setting. Here you can activate, deactivate many things, even activate a time watermark, infrared, night vision on, off, or automatic. Choose the audio level of the camera. And then we have the most important thing, that's the alarm detection setting. So I turn this on. Now you can select what you want to have as a maximum for your clips. You can increase that up to two minutes. I have it on 15 seconds and I have even activated now a early termination. So when the bird is flying away, it stops recording. Then we can also set an alarm interval if we have too many alarms. And we can choose uh, between three different sensitivity levels and What's awesome here is that we can set the activity area. So that's an awesome thing. And as far as I can see, it's included in the free version, which is awesome. In a lot of apps, we just have this with a subscription here. It looks like we have it for free, so we can reduce. You can see we had a lot of false alerts here on the left side, of course, because of the wind. Now here I can reduce the alert area here. I can exclude everything which is moving. I save this and this will prevent then pretty much from all the false alerts. That's awesome. And we can also use a schedule if you want. Exclude some times. And then we have also some value added services like the storage cloud storage which you can buy. They have some different plans, monthly, yearly and so on. If you're interested, you can look it up. You can also activate offline notification if the device gets disconnected from your Wi-Fi, then updates and so on and so on. So it's a very comprehensive solution, really good. What I like here is really the quality, apart from the functions, the quality of the image. I mean, this is pretty much dark now outside. And there is no artificial light and the image or the video is still very, very good quality. The best quality which I've ever seen from such a bird feeder. So we have basically everything what we need. We have a really good quality bird feeder itself is the solar panel. Of course, it's only a single solar panel. But still the positive thing is that we can place it in an optimal location regarding the sun. And everything is really solid build. I would say it is as good as it gets and then really awesome footage. And also the app is really nice. The footage is good. Everything is easy to use. You can share, you can save, you can do whatever you want. So from my side, full recommendation. And so if you're interested, I'll put down the link to the Amazon listing down into the description so you can check it out and order it right from there if you like it and so i hope i've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments just write to the comment section below and i'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel thanks for watching see you next time